Okay, so here we go with January 2011, Unit 1, Physics, AS level. And just a reminder that you're not meant to start in the real exam on these multiple choice questions. Acceleration can be found from one of these quantities. And this is just straight book work. The acceleration can be found from the gradient of a velocity time graph. Okay then. Which table here is correct for scalar and vector quantities? Well, crucially, both scalars and vectors have magnitude so we can immediately rule out this line and this line so it's between these bottom two that have magnitude the crucial thing is that um, a scalar does not have directional information a vector does so that means that we're clearly looking at C here being the answer so which of the following is not a unit of energy. So we've got some familiar ones here like kilowatt hour, that's par times time. Anything that's par times time, which would include D here with watts times seconds, uh, will definitely be an energy. Um, we also have uh, newtons times meters, which is force times distance, so that's work, so that's definitely energy. So the odd one out here is newtons per second, this first one. Body is acted on by a vertical force of 18 newtons and a horizontal force of 32 newtons. The angle to which the horizontal of the resultant force is given by... And we're asked to look at some of these options. So, we've got a vertical force of 18, it doesn't matter whether we draw it above the horizontal or below, it doesn't matter. And a horizontal force of 32 newtons, it, again, it doesn't matter whether we uh, write it to the right or the left, it doesn't make any difference. But we're particularly interested in this resultant and its angle. Specifically, it says here to the horizontal, so it's this angle we're interested in. Now we just remind ourselves that it's the tan of theta that is opposite over adjacent. Sokatoa toa is tan of theta is opposite over adjacent. So the tan of theta here will be 18 over 32. So theta will be tan to the minus 1 of 18 over 32. And that means we're talking about B. the magnitude of the resultant force in newtons is going to be one of these expressions well if we call this excuse me if we call this value r then r squared will equal 18 squared plus 32 squared and that means that r is going to be the root of 18 squared plus 32 squared and that's going to be answer D. Which of the following statements is going to be true for the two forces in a Newton's third law pair? Now remember when things pair up in Newton's third law there's several things that are true. They have the same value, they point in opposite directions, they have the same nature, the same type of force, and they act on two different objects. So we can rule out things that have different magnitudes. We can rule out things that act on the same body. We can rule out things that have the different nature. They're a different type of force. And that leaves D. They are the same type of force and they act on two different bodies. A ball is dropped from rest from a building 35 meters high. 
If air resistance is neglected, the ball hits the ground with which of these speeds? We need an equation that has displacement and velocities that doesn't require us to know the time. So the one that fits the bill here is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as because it doesn't have t in it. And we can simplify it further. Because the ball is dropped, we can say that u must be nothing. And as a result of that, this equation just becomes v is the root of 2as, like so. And that comes to 26.2. So answer D. A physics book gives this definition. A material which shows a large plastic deformation under compression. This is the definition for... Okay, so what are these things? Um, well, ductile and malleable are the, the materials here that would show big plastic deformations. The difference between those two is that ductile is the ability for something to be pulled and drawn out into a wire. So that's a tension force. Malleable is the thing that can be hammered. Now, if you think about what hammered is, it's a compressive force squashing the object. So this is the definition of malleable. A ball bearing is released in a measuring cylinder filled with oil. To increase the time taken for the ball bearing to reach the bottom, which one of the following would have to increase? So, the temperature of the oil, well, no, because if you increase the temperature of the oil, you will make it more um, runny, so it'll become less viscous and produce less drag. The viscosity of the oil, that would start to hold it up, so that's a possibility. Um, the gravitational field strength, no, that would make it fall faster. And the density of the ball bearing, again, that would produce more downward force and would make it fall faster. So you can see we're looking at B there. Here now we have a standard sort of uh, bookwork kind of question. Which of the following is a vector? Well, distance isn't. Force is certainly a candidate, so we're saying no there, tick here. Speed doesn't have direction, and work doesn't have direction, so we're talking about force. B again.